Hey everybody, welcome to a special bonus Friday episode of Life After the Crown. Now, if you've been paying attention to social media the last few days uh, after the Miss Universe pageant, you'll know that Pageant Planet founder Stephen Roddy basically came out and said that Pageant Planet is boycotting the Miss America pageant this year and also covering her reign. They're not abandoning the state pageants and the state contestants, but the national pageant itself they are abandoning. So I reached out to Stephen yesterday and I said, hey, man, you want to come on and talk about it? So, hey, Stephen, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you reaching out and thanks for the invite. Well, I got to tell you, it was bold of you. It took a lot of courage, I'm sure, to come out and do that. I mean, you know, considering you are pageant planet and Miss America is a humongous pageant among that world. I guess what I really want for everybody listening is take us through the inside uh, story here of, of how this came about and what you what finally made you take the step to do this publicly. Yeah, well, it's been a long process. And honestly, it, I'm the public person behind Pageant Planet. I mean, it was me on the other side of the camera reading the words. <laughs> However, it was very much a, a group and collective effort. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I mean, Pageant Planet, we've got about 17 people on staff plus tech team. And whenever I'm considering something like this, I'll bring it to the staff and say, like, what are your feelings? Like, do you feel like we're right? Do you feel like, I mean, what are your debates back and forth? And on our staff calls, we debated it back and forth. Like, should we cover them or not? And the buildup has been throughout the year, since because we hosted their People's Choice last year. Mm-hmm. I organized the autograph session for all the former Miss Americas. I was involved in, like, the Miss America suite uh, for all the former Miss Americas, took them to and fro for all the appearances, volunteered. My wife and I went there on our own dime for the most part. Uh, Miss America took care of, um, or Miss America Former Foundation took care of our hotel room. But um, outside of that, like we paid for all our travel there and then actually gave them like tens of thousands of dollars, right? Um, so like donations, whatever. Then like throughout the next year, they were just basically attempting to silence everything that we put out against them. And it wasn't even against them because we really report neutrally. We're not trying to take a side. We're just trying to keep people informed of what's happening in the industry, right? We're a, we're a media outlet. So, you know, if we, uh, after we posted something like, ah, can you take that down? Can you critique or whatever? I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. Like, why don't you assign someone? And then I'll just have my editor reach out to them directly before we release something. And then that was fine. So they would start to give us these one worded, like half a sentence rebuttals. And then we would go ahead and go through with it with their half a sentence rebuttal, if it made sense. And then they're like, ah, we don't like that. Will you take it down? And we're like, no, we can't take it down. So that aggression kept building and building and building on their part, because they were like, you're not, you know, you're not censoring this stuff. And I'm like, this is nothing different than the Atlantic press or NBC or Fox or anybody else isn't saying about you. We're not even revealing any new information and read it. It's energy neutral. Like we're not bashing like Gretchen or anything like that. At that time, she was still involved. And so it just, for me, that was just rubbing me the wrong way. It's like, you don't want to contribute. You don't want to pull me into the conversation, but like you still want my support and like, you just want me to praise you all the time. And I'm like, that's not what a news media outlet does. It's not a fair thing. So then that kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me was they said, well, we wanted to work with you. And this was like their, their branding and marketing person. He's like, but we can't work with you. Uh, we're really concerned about because you have the word pageant in your domain name. Oh my God. I'm like, wait, you, you're like, you're serious? I'm like, pageant? That's what they're off. And <laughs> why is that a bad word? Have you, did you ask him that? Why is that a bad word to them? He was saying this to one of my staff people because I got so annoyed with them. And we we had a, a heated debate last time. Where I'm like, I'm done. I'm not talking to them anymore. So I just assigned two staff people to talk, like be the liaison instead of me. Because I'm like, they just make my blood <laughs> boil. Because um, I, I just, it, the things that, like I said, we're giving you free publicity. We're helping you. We're willing to tell your side of the story but then they wouldn't give us anything, but then they would silence anything that we, they would attempt to silence anything. And then they would get mad when we wouldn't change it. So it was just like, it was odd. So he was actually talking with one of my staff and the staff was like, serious, like pageant, like you're, 
you're saying you're not going to work with us because pageant he's like well i mean i it's just you know for branding and like we're not we're trying to move away from like being called a pageant and just kind of backing up off of that and that's when i realized that i don't want to cover someone and it, this wasn't an original idea for me this is actually an original idea from people that comment on our posts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who it, it was that originally did. And I kind of like kick on myself, like, cause I don't remember their handle, but I remember scrolling through our Instagram feed and they said something like channels like pageant planet should really reconsider covering Miss America who doesn't want to be called a pageant. I'm like, <laughs> and I, I replied back to the person. So if you're listening to this podcast, please email me so I can give you proper credit. Uh, and I was like, you make a really valid point. And when they said that thing about the pageant, that's when I came to the same conclusion that you just said, like, what's wrong with the word pageant? Like, why are you trying to move away from this? And what, like, what I do as, as a company in pageantry, if I continue to support a competition that doesn't want to be referred to as a pageant, like, why are you making this like a cuss word? So, and what would this do to future competitors three, four years down the road you know, because it creates this divide, right? Like, oh, no, 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 I'm not competing in a pageant. I'm competing in Miss America. The competition is totally different. Like, you're, you're a pageant girl. You're over here. I'm in the competitions over there, right? That's what it would do if I would let this thing go on. And so that's where I just, um, we as a staff decided we're not covering Miss America this year. They're not a pageant. We shouldn't treat them like a pageant. We should treat them like America's Got Talent. We don't cover America's Got Talent. No one thinks twice about that. So we'll do the same. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, should we just like not cover it? And then the staff actually came up like, we probably need to do a video announcement of why we're not covering it. So people just don't think that we're dropping the ball and not becoming relevant anymore. They come to their own conclusions. So that's why um, we decided to do a video. And I was like, I don't know. Do I want to do it? It's going to be misunderstood. So anyways, give it our best shot and put it out there. Well, I thought you did a really nice job of presenting it, you know, in a in a very professional fashion. Um, and by the way, the the whole censorship thing, which they approach you with, where you need to take this down, and it it becomes this argument. It, this is not the first time I have heard this. There's a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker in L.A., um, who is making a documentary. She originally titled "Saving Miss America." Um, she was served a cease and desist letter by the Miss America organization, so it's now called the Untitled Pageant Documentary. But she's working on it. I actually talked to her a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I'm fascinated that they've gone from Miss America, the pageant, to um, using, uh, these are kind of political tactics. I mean, if you think about like elections and the way that, you know, candidates go after each other, I mean, that's kind of the tactics they're taking, where if I don't like what you're doing, I'm going to shut you up with legal action or something like that. And that's what it feels like. Yeah. And that's what they try to do. Like uh, Regina sent me an email, you know, and it was like this lawyer was CC'd in on it. And, you know, that's, I mean, I've received a few cease and desist from Miss Americas in previous years. Of course, I've also been sued by Donald Trump. Like, so <laughs> there's all these things. So it's like, I mean, everybody, I guess, takes a swing. But, um, you know, but that is a tactic that they've used since, um, you know, Sam was involved in the industry. He was the one that sent me my two previous cease and desist because um, we sent out an email, you know, that, had the word Miss America in it. And I was like, well, the, sorry, buddy, but the email's already sent. I can't retract the email. I won't send out another email that says that title. <laughs> but there's nothing else we can do about it, right? So um, have you ever had direct so contact with like Gretchen that. or Regina, or is it mainly through someone else at the organization? Uh, no, I mean, I've, like, through email and stuff. Not, um, I've never had been on the phone with them. The last time I was talking with the other staff person at Miss America, I'm like, okay, talking with you is a waste of time because like you're not, you're not conveying the message or something's falling through the cracks. So I'm like, if you want to talk to me again, put one of them on the phone because this is, this is a waste of my time. Well, what you know, was so, it that they wanted to censor that you guys had printed in a, in a blog or, or whatever? The most recent one that I remember was um, the, the letter that they sent out to all the state directors. So that some, oh, one of the state director yes. about removing evening gown. So one of the state directors posted on their fan page. Um, I think she either tagged us in it or maybe somebody else emailed it to us. We can track it down and put it up on um, our website. And then they didn't mention that one specifically, but oddly enough, they sent me an email about their profiles on Pageant Planet right after we posted that. So I'm like, 
okay, like what's this? I mean, you haven't had a problem with any of your profiles and they said we couldn't use contested images on our website too. So here's what I'm hearing from the, you know, girls who have competed not only before uh, Gretchen and Regina took over, but after, you know, in, in the current crop of contestants that just competed in this last Miss America before um, we see the one coming next week is that, you know, you own a business, okay? So if you stood up as the leader of Pageant Planet, you had your 17 staff members and you said, guys, this is what we're doing. I don't care if you like it or not. This is the way we're going. Do you think you would get buy-in from your staff? Oh, no. Like, we don't even run our organ. We don't run any of our organization. Like, we don't run our website like that for the community. The community kind of guides the ship for our website, as do our staff members. So, no, that's not my leadership style in my marriage or my company or anything. And that's kind of what I feel like is, you know, from, from what everybody tells me, even state directors in the Miss America organization is that it's kind of the, you know, my way or the highway type thing. And if you don't like it, get out. And I, I, you know, it's, it's almost like a self-destructive path that they're on. And I have directly contacted Gretchen and Regina and invited them on the podcast. And I I have no, no doubt MAO will listen to this. So if you are listening, this is your open invitation to the public. I would love to have you on the podcast because I want you to tell me where you guys are going and what you plan to do with this thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, it just open up a dialogue. I mean, their formers got together, signed petitions, like we want this. And like, if you look at the comments, Mallory Hagan and Betty Cantrell are like, yeah, they're going at they, it. They were battling out. The, <laughs> yeah. And it was like, and another, you know, like really concerned fan. Cause all this is just derived out of like being concerned for the organization as a whole. Like, I don't want Miss America to go anywhere, but if Miss America does go anywhere, the pageant industry is still going to be fine. Like Miss America is not the biggest pageant inside the United States, nor is it the only pageant in the United States or the world, right? So if the industry is going to be fine regardless, and it's not in my best interest to want anybody to fail. Like this isn't about it failing. It's just saying, seriously, if you don't want to be a pageant, then you cannot expect the pageant community to support you while also like trying to keep them at arm's length. It just doesn't work that way, you know? So it's like, you can't have it both ways in this particular scenario. Well, and so, I thought it was interesting, like, all the numbers that you pointed out in the video, you know, about how the percentage of people that pay attention, et cetera. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and I got this from Miss America. Like, I didn't even make those up. Like, that, there was a survey that they gave me last year when I was there at the pageant. So it's like, they told me. Oh, so the relevance numbers are from them directly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make it up, and it wasn't a survey that I conducted. It was a survey that they had conducted. And the same guy that said he couldn't work for me because he was a pageant was the one that gave me the numbers. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. okay. Like, you have the information. And I told him <laughs> the same thing I did on the video. I said, you realize, right, if you correlate, and I said the same thing, I'm like, that 1% is the pageant industry. And he's like, that's really interesting. I told him that at the competition, and then 11 months later, they can't work with us because we're a pageant. I'm like, this is, okay. (laughs) Scratching my head and it just, bewilderment. I think the, the, the whole thing that I'm just trying to figure out, and I don't know if you have any insight on it or not, is really going back to the word pageant and the, and the reason why they feel that's you know a, a bad word. I mean, I, I know there's kind of a, I guess what we'll call an ultra feminist approach um, that they're taking to the Miss America competition pageant, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm not getting where they think it's going to go and get better. I just, I don't, I'm not seeing it. And, you know, obviously I'm not on the inside, but I mean, numbers and, and your audience speak for themselves. I mean, they're not happy and everything's kind of falling apart right now. Oh yeah. So here's my, here's my speculation. None of this is gospel. None of this has come from Miss America. This is all my, my speculation. Um, well, some part, I, I'll tell you the parts that, um, so fact, they hired a consultant, paid them $200,000 to rebrand Miss America from Miss America to Miss America 2.0. Okay. Like it's a software update. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but anyways, so this consultant, and I know this because I've hired consultants to help me market Pageant Planet. They don't understand the industry of pageantry. And how can you until you're in it? True. It's a very kind of cult-like society, kind of like the Illuminati. You don't know what's out there until you're <laughs> in it and then you see it everywhere, right? Yeah. And it has its own unique heartbeat that certain things and, and principles that um, – no, principles are principles. Anyway, I'm taking a, a side tangent. So you hire an outside consultant. They come in and they tell you pageants are dated. 
where are they getting their information that pageants are dated? They're getting their information that pageants are dated from the media. The media yeah. presents which is so are accurate, dated isn't because, it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, things like you know volunteering a homeless shelter. Yeah, it's you know so dated. Getting scholarship money and uh, meeting with presidents and high officials. Yeah, that stuff is so dated. Who would want to do that? <laughs> Um, so this high level consultant who was brought in from the outside tells them, you know what? 98% of the people recognize you. 1% only find you relevant. You need to, if you want to expand the company, you need to remove antiquated wording and branding such as pageants. You need to change it from like, you know, change it up again, all this is speculation, but, and have hiring other uh, consultants. This is what uh, similar things that I've been told, like how big is this market really? Cause they don't know. So, um, you know, shun that and come over here, call it a competition. You're going to appeal to more people. Look how big America's got talent is. Look how big all these other things that attract and like they're on the cutting edge. And like you could be that cause you have all these talented girls. And so they think like, okay, let's, you know, scrape away a swimsuit Let's be it more talent focused, be it more story focused, just like America's Got Talent does, because they always tell the backstory or American Idol and all that stuff, right? And let's appeal to this kind of audience. And so that's where I feel like it's coming from so that they can get bigger sponsors or whatever. I don't think it was from the perspective of, hey, let's run this thing into the ground. <laughs> I don't think it was that. No, I, I don't also either. feel like, like Gretchen, whether you liked her or didn't, um, and I don't know a whole lot about her historical background, but she was a very high level employee. There's a very different skill set when it comes to being a high paid employee, yes. like e- even if you're making millions of dollars a year, versus running an organization, even an organization of 20 people, 10 people. There's different communications involved. Like you have to like get buy in from your team before you just make a split decision. There's things like that that need to be developed. And if you look at, like, if you Google Regina, she's been kind of run out. Like, her Wikipedia page is not flattering. No, she's she's got a little checkered past in her own right. Yeah. And then you're you're bringing that into an organization where, let's face it, like, pageantry, it is a little cotton balls and rainbows. You can't come in the industry with an iron fist. It just doesn't work out well for you. And, you know, people that try to do that in the past, they cause a lot of great divide. So anyways, that's my perspective on why they're doing like what they're, what they've done. It is not to like destroy the industry, but it's coming from the perspective of we want to try to make this thing bigger, but then they're not really understanding the heartbeat of the industry and what they're doing. Cause like the law of first mention, the law of first is that um, if you're the first person to the market, everybody refers to you. So for example, um, somebody says, Oh, let's get an Uber. They might not be jumping on Uber. They'll be yep. getting in a lift. Or if somebody says, oh, give me a chapstick. Chapstick is the name of a brand, but it was the first person to the market. So now everybody refers to every kind of chapstick as chapstick. Yep. Right? So, and you see this time and again, and Miss America was the first person to the market in America, not the world, but in America for pageantry. So everybody's going to think of it as a pageant. So it's like, you're not just going to easily erase that past for roughly a hundred years. People have been referring to you as a pageant. You're not just going to pivot and be like, "Mm, sorry, we're a competition. You're still a pageant, but if you want to shun away the pageant community and you say that you're not a pageant, then you're no longer part of the pageant community and you can't expect our support. Well, outside of MAO, um, as you have uh, released this video to the public, have you received any pushback from the public, you know, and and I guess the the pageant community? You know, I feel like we've gotten, it's probably been about 96% positive Mm -hmm. and I would say about 4% um, pushback. And when I see it, uh, the, the biggest pushback has been that we're dividing the industry and in doing this. Mm-hmm. And my rebuttal is, well, we're not because this organization says they're not a pageant. So they're no longer part of our industry. Like we're just saying, honor their request, let them go. And if they come back, like we will welcome them with open arms. Absolutely. You know, because it's again, not in our best interest to see any pageant fail or do poorly. It's not a good business model for me. Um, and I, and I so, saw those comments, and, and I think their argument was, well, you're fighting against change. I don't know right. how I see that as fighting against change when they don't want to be part of what you're saying. Right. I'm saying, like, no, I'm respecting your fact that you want to change, 
And I'm saying even to the detriment of the profitability of my own company, potentially, go, right? Like, I'm not fighting change. I'm like respecting that you want to change. And I'm saying, go, just don't expect me to like cover you. And I, you know, I'm sure you guys have covered them quite a bit. And I'm sure historically, Pageant Planet has been huge on Miss America. And I'm sure this will, you know, drastically affect how you guys cover things moving forward. Oh, yeah, we... I mean, last year we covered every title holder, that every title holder had their own day, as well as every Miss America, leading up to Miss America. So there was a title holder and a former Miss America that was posted every day leading up. So you're talking 52 days, that's what, about almost two months Mm -hmm. every day, something about Miss America leading up to Miss America. So, so that was, that was the one thing um, about like us creating divide. The second is the, some of the local directors were like, how dare you like, you basically not support us local directors or the contestants. It's not our fault that Miss America is doing it. And for that, like they just didn't watch the video. Yeah, all I was the like, way did through, you see the video? They... <laughs> I know. Yeah. So and that's what happens with a lot of times. Like people don't necessarily watch it all or don't necessarily read it all. And then the other argument is that, you know, Miss USA, Miss Universe doesn't call themselves a pageant. And so I, I saw that one and I actually took that to the staff. I'm like, does she have a valid point here? Like, you know, am I making, like, is this, did we accidentally make this too big of a deal? And the staff was actually like, well, no, because Miss USA and Miss Universe, like they use pageant stuff like interchangeably on their website, one. And two, like they're not saying and actively pushing away the the pageant audience or trying to silence people. But like, even when we were saying, I mean, we used to back in the day had more of an opinionated voice because I was still learning how to run a media company. <laughs> um, like, you know, it's kind of new to me. Um, and, you know, they never, like, said, take this down or whatever to us then. The, the reason why Trump sued me was, like, I mean, it was a legitimate reason that I owned a domain name called MissUSAPageant.org and got it to rank right underneath their pageant. And I was like, hey, you know, sign up for this free thing and it'll help you win this USA. <laughs> so that was, like, a legit thing. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was like, okay, I respect it. Um, but then, but the whole thing is like by me saying like, listen, we're, we're not going to cover um, Miss America, nor are we going to cover her reign. It's not really going to do much of an impact in the next one or two weeks. I get that, right? Because seriously, they're going to have, they're on the national TV, right? And the other thing is like, it's, um, they're going to get, because of that, the ripple effect of a lot of media coverage. So I do understand that where it's going to impact them. And I don't feel like they really get it because they don't understand how powerful our industry is when we unite together in a common cause. Mm -hmm. And like, we have so many powerful women and contestants and, um, directors and just powerful people, like leaders that's involved in our industry. But they, so what they don't understand, like Miss America only really promotes Miss America about 60 days before the competition. After that, they go ghost. You don't really hear about Miss America throughout her reign. So it seems like the majority of their efforts are the 60 days leading up to the national pageant. And that's because they're they're understaffed and um, all that stuff. But the thing that keeps them relevant is individuals like yourself, individuals like, you know, pageant planet staff, We continue to post about them on social media throughout the year, right? Like we keep them in the spotlight so that when they 60 days before the pageant next year, you know, so that they can light the fire again, stroke the Kindle, and then everybody gets excited. But if all of a sudden we stop talking about them, stop posting about them, just don't even like, like acknowledge any kind of appearance or whatever, then that fizzle starts to dry out. And if we all like unite against that, then, you know, maybe not next year, maybe not the year after, but in a few years, if the pageant community just stops posting about them, we're their base. It'll be really hard to get a renewal of the television contract. And then maybe they'll start listening to their local directors. And then maybe the organization can turn back around. Well, let me ask you this, because every Miss America Mm -hmm. that I've had on here, Miss America contestant state winner, I really ask them all the same thing. If you could take control right now, or if you at least had a voice in the, in, the, in the leadership room, what would you do right now for Miss America if you had a chance to, to put your input in there and say, you know, these are some things you could do to improve? What would you say to them? I would just use based on what works with Pageant Planet. And what works with us is 
every week on Monday nights, we have three different conference calls, one for the sales team, one for the marketing, one for the customer service. Every week, um, depending on the call, we'll either do one where everybody goes around Robin and they talk about what worked last week and what could be improved. Everyone has to contribute something that is actually working within the organization and then everyone critiques the organization, right? So it creates this open dialogue and everybody has got to do both. You, you can't just skirt away with only giving compliments. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do is we pass around a form and this goes around weekly too and it's called the brainstorm form and we, they have to fill out three things and this is what should we start doing, what should we stop doing and what should we continue doing? And so the ideas that we come up with as an organization are not just from me. It's from our writing staff or social media team or salespeople, et cetera. And we make these minor tweaks along the way. And so the, it's clear that, I mean, me as a leader, I don't have all the answers. Them as leadership does not have all the answers. It seems like the more they're trying to decide, the more it's going downhill. Mm -hmm. So what they need to do is give a platform, whether it's a formula that I just laid out or something else that allows their directors and their contestants to contribute ideas of both critique and like continue doing this. We love this so that they can continue to evolve with the industry. Like I agree, like the industry needs to continue to evolve, you know, but you shouldn't ostracize the industry while pursuing the other 98%. Well, it's kind of the law of the buy-in. I mean, if everybody in your boat isn't rowing the right way, you know, the, the boat's going to go nowhere. And, and I, I know as a leader and you know as a leader that, of course, not everybody is going to be on board with everything that you want to do. But if half of them or 75 percent of them are like, you know, screw you, I don't want to do this. You know, and you've seen that with the state directors and some of the former Miss Americas with petitions to remove them. I mean, your boat's not going anywhere. It's probably going backwards, if anything. And, you know, if you don't have buy in, that's probably the biggest thing that I would say is you got to come to a compromise with people because if you can't figure that out, you might as well just shut it down. Yeah, completely. And you know, the thing is like, I, I have found that within my own staff, that there are some times where we all don't agree with everything, but if they understand, if they feel heard in the process and understand why I'm making the certain decisions that I'm making, like honestly, as a CEO, do I have to tell them that? No, I could just say, we're doing this you know, deal with it. Mm -hmm. It's not a great business model in my opinion, <laughs> because like who wants to like be in a dictatorship? No one. Right. So with Miss America, it's like, they don't have to give everyone everything that they want. That's just not realistic. But if you let people feel heard and you say like, listen, we are changing and here's your results. 80% of you said like you wanted to get rid of swimsuit. And so because of that, we're getting rid of swimsuit, you know, but there wasn't any like discussion and then people were finding out about it right before they were walking in the interview room, like contestants last year. So it was just like, it was crazy. I know this has been a process for you and I, I'm sure, you know, coming out publicly and talking about it the other day, you know, it took some courage, but um, I admire you for doing so. I mean, I know not everybody may agree with me or you and that's okay. And I'm, I'm all for, you know, everybody having their own opinion about it, but um, I just appreciate you taking the lead on something that I know everybody behind the scenes is talking about. And uh, I know that we're all going to be looking forward to, you know, what you guys are doing in the future to continue to further the pageant industry, if you will. Oh, we've got some solid plans. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, we've got some solid plans to continue to make it thrive and grow um, in both relevancy and in popularity. If you ever need anything, you know, you can always reach out to me and talk about it um, publicly because, you know, that's what that's really what I'm here for. And uh, thanks for taking the time today. I, I, I know you're very busy right now, so do appreciate it. Thank you, Tim, so much for the invite. And everyone, thanks so much for listening. Mm -hmm.